Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the start of another reading vlog. This is the Stuff Your Kindle reading vlog that uh, Izzy, Shay, Brie, Megan, and I decided to do because of the Stuff Your Kindle event that happens. This happens a couple of times a year and a whole bunch of Kindle eBooks go up for free and you can download as many as you like. And we decided that we would, you know, go through and peruse the list and come, come up with some that we were interested in reading. And we have done that. So I will start this vlog a little bit later today. It is 7.30 in the morning on Friday, the 30th of June. It was an eventful night. Uh, I have the Magic Claims live show in about half an hour but I also got woken up at 1.30 in the morning with another earthquake, which is the second one we've had in Melbourne in two months, which is very uncommon for us. <laughs> Look, I know that people experience earthquakes more frequently than we do, but being woken up at 1.30 a.m. by an apartment building shaking is uh, an experience and very disconcerting. So I did not have the greatest night's sleep. We're just, we're gonna go with it. And I'm gonna get through this live show, then I have to go to work for a meeting and I will hopefully be home by lunchtime. And then we are going to jump in to the reading vlog. I'm really excited. I've got a whole stack of hockey romances. I literally downloaded every single hockey romance that I could find, plus some superhero books, some, I think I might have some romantic suspense. It might be a sci-fi one or something in there as well. So yeah, I will let you guys know when I have started reading. To be perfectly honest, because they're just so good with their characters that it was, weird for them to miss. All right, so I'm home from my meeting and it went really well and my job description is a lot clearer going forward for at least the next term. So I'm deeply grateful for that. I have just been editing a video that needs to go up on my kids channel, which is a tour of my indigenous picture book shelf for NADOC week. And I'm going to think, I think I'm just gonna go through and edit my reset now. And then I'm gonna choose some books to start reading. So this is what I have downloaded so far. I might jump back on a bit later and see if there's anything else I want to get. So far there's 35 books. I figured that I'm gonna do this vlog for three days, today, Saturday and Sunday. There are a couple of books that I would really like to read and if they don't come out the way that I select the books for today and Saturday, then on Sunday I'll just read the ones that I really am interested in reading. So here's what I've decided to do. I have two dice. I have my eight sided dice, which is going to determine the row. So I currently have seven rows of five. If I roll an eight, it means I get to pick any book because you know, let's face it. I like to put things in my favor as much as possible. And then to determine the book that I'm going to pick in the row, I'm going to use the six sided dice and that will be one, two, three, four, five. And then if I roll a six, it means I get to pick whichever book I want to read in that row. So lots of chances to make this nice and easy for myself to mood read, but also some opportunities to try some other books. And then once I start reducing rows, I will probably just roll again. Okay, so let's pick the first book that I'm going to read. Row number six. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are all hockey romances. Doing this one-handed is probably ill-advised. Four. So we are going to be reading On The Fly. Okay, so I have decided to DNF On The Fly. I'm 30% of the way in and I'm just not feeling it. Like I love the concept. So it is about a woman called JC or Jacqueline who inherits an NHL team when her father passes away. And so she takes over the team, but on her very first day, the captain and the star of the team threatens to walk and he's convinced to stay because she gives him sad face eyes. And then the coach quits and she installs her father's former assistant, who is the daughter of hockey royalty, as the coach. Now, the coach knows what she's doing, that's fine. But it all just feels a little convenient. And of course, the issue is that everyone is making out that JC and the team captain are together. And at 30%, they're not, they've, had, they've literally run into each other, like literally run into each other on rollerblades and ice skates twice. And I wanna say the writing is a little bit inconsistent and I'm just, I'm not feeling it, so I'm going to switch to something else. Okay, row five. One, two, three, five. So row five. And book two. Which is a G.L. Thomas book. 
so I finished Friends That Have Sex by GL Thomas, which I didn't realize GL Thomas was the pen name for two authors. But anyway, that was something I found out while I was researching. And this is a, I hesitate to say romance because you know it's going to get there, but it doesn't end up on a cliffhanger and there is no ATA. It also deals really heavily with one of the main characters going through treatment for cancer. So be aware of that going into it because it does go into chemo treatments and things like that pretty heavily. There's also a lot of on-page drug use. So this is about Teddy. She's the one who is going through treatment for cancer and she has a friendship with Reggie. She's always wanted something more but he's never really wanted that and so he's kind of pushed back at it and they're just friends. He's also friends with Asha and one night when Reggie and Asha are at a bar, Teddy is there and Teddy and Asha have this immediate connection. But with everything that's going on in her life, Teddy is not someone who necessarily calls people back, although sometimes she expects people to call her. And like it's it's complicated because she's unwell and she's going through a lot. And so really it's this very messy situation where Teddy and Asher are hooking up and Reggie suddenly decides that he wants to be with Teddy, but he doesn't know that the other two are together. And because everything is stressful and messy and whatnot, nothing is resolved. So it was really interesting because I thought I had read GL Thomas, but I'm not sure that I have. I may have had a book of theirs on my TBR. Anyway, that was interesting to try a new book and a new style. It's not my favorite type of romance, but I enjoyed reading it and trying something new. Sorry, I'm getting a whole lot of glare off of my glasses as I'm trying to move and suddenly I just look like I have one shining eye. Anyway, I'm going to roll maybe one more book tonight because I also have to read a review copy so that I can talk about it in my wrap up tomorrow. So let's decide what I'm going to read. In the efforts of full disclosure, I've taken out my DNF, I've taken out the one I read, I've also taken out a couple of books that I have physical copies of that I, I just downloaded digital copies of and I've added in Reactivated Oz and One Night in Foxbrook. But I still have seven rows of books to choose from. I'm only putting the phone here to stop the dice from rolling everywhere. Okay, what row? Six. One, two, three, six. Okay, so this is gonna be a hockey romance. <gasps> six, penalty box. Oh good, that was one of the ones that I wanted to read. Cool, so we're gonna read penalty box, which is this one. So again, the fact that I don't read things about books, this is a contemporary why choose hockey romance, so yay. <laughs> you would think that when I was going through this list that I would have read things but instead I literally did let's find the word hockey in any book and just downloaded it. Oh my brain. Anyway it's really good so far. How far am I into it? I'm 11% into the book. It's great so far. Okay so I feel like I have to I'm like 30% in and I feel like I need to stop here and just explain a couple of things because I'm going to forget to do it at the end. This is the story about Henley. She is a hockey gold medalist and she, at the very start of the book she has lost her place on the team because her boyfriend who is also a professional hockey player leaked a sex tape of her and we don't like him but Henley is also the guardian of her younger sibling her sibling's name is Reese. they use they them pronouns and they've been playing on a boys team except team that they're currently playing on makes their life very difficult and so they're told they're no longer able to play on the team and while all of this upheav upheaval is going on Henley and Reese are out visiting a friend and then Reese is given the opportunity to attend a an exclusive hockey camp over the summer and Henley is also asked to step in as one of the coaches and while she's there she meets a former friend of hers Fletcher. In amongst all of this she has been at one point comforted by a stranger who turns out to be a professional hockey player named Reed who has taken the year off because his mother was sick with cancer and has passed away. She also had a one night stand with a guy that she didn't know the name of, she just called him Blondie at a party. And so now we like all of that's happened, they're now at the camp and it turns out that Blondie is Dax and is Fletcher's roommate and Reed is currently staying in the motel that Henley is staying in. So this is where the why choose element comes into it. But the reason I wanted to stop here and I just wanted to make a comment about a why choose book is that Henley has stayed the night with Fletcher and literally just sleeping. She's come out of her room and run into Dax who has seen her and has just kissed her because he can't get her out of his mind. And Fletcher's walked in on that and has obviously been very confused. But bless him, the one thing that he reiterates is let's just go to sleep and in the morning let's talk about it like adults. I like that we're at this point and we're at 30% where it's been reiterated 
that communication is important. Now, is it maybe making, is the author maybe making a point? Probably. Would someone necessarily say that given what's happened? Maybe not. However, they did in here and I appreciate that deeply. I'm optimistic. I'm kind of worried it's going to end on a hang on a cliffhanger, but other than that, I'm very optimistic about this book. Also, there's a lot of hockey on page and a lot of hockey talk and I've had to look things up. So this makes me happy. So I finished Penalty Box and I did enjoy it. It does do one of the things that I absolutely hate in books like this because you have a really strong female heroine in Henley. I really like her, but of course there is not another single female friend that she has in this book book aside from Sarah who is her friend from the very start but she's only in it for like a couple of pages I, I can forgive a lot of things and in a lot of ways I'll let this slide in this case but you know she moves into a share house that's part of the campus with other instructors and doesn't get along with all of the other women and I would totally be fine with that because you don't have to get along with everyone and to be honest I could not live in a house with lots of other women I would probably lose my mind but they don't have to all be out to get you or have to only be out to basically be like a sorority, I would imagine. So that was not my favorite. There's also a secret society in here and I, because Henley is working at this really exclusive private school for sort of winter athlete, winter sport athletes. Anytime you have these kind of academies, they always feel a little bit cultish, which is fine for a story. And it's very clear that this is a spin-off series from another one, which features another why choose polyamorous situation. And I'd be interested in, in seeing how that all played out because that's quite a large polyamorous family from what I gather from what we found out in here. But yeah, there was a secret society and the secret society has just come into play at the very end. There is a cliffhanger. I'm gonna have to sit on this and decide whether or not it's worth finishing. So, so far Henley is in a confirmed sort of polyamorous relationship with Fletcher and Reed and they're both cinnamon rolls like they're great. Dax is coming around to the idea but he's got his own issues to do with his past. Henley is dealing with one of her assistant coaches who has been constantly undermining her. She's got a couple of players on her team who are constantly undermining her because she's a woman and the ex has reared his head again. So like I enjoyed it like it was fun but I don't know if I'd continue it. I'm, I'm gonna have to sit with it for a little while. I have to read this for my recent reads video tomorrow. So I'm going to do that. And then I will check in with you guys tomorrow when I roll and pick some more books off my list. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. It is a filming morning. So back in the bedroom, lights are lights. I have a couple of videos to film this morning, then I need to duck to the supermarket and then I need to go across to the pharmacy across the road to see if they do whooping cough vaccinations because I need to get that for when uh, Jess's baby is born and then I also need to do my laundry. But everything else is going to be either editing or reading today, fingers crossed. And I forgot to say most importantly is that the hockey is on at 3.30 <laughs> so I will be watching that all the streamed game because my team is playing at 3.30. So. We'll be watching. Hooray, I'm back. I have had my whooping cough vaccination. I didn't actually expect to get in this morning. I expected to just go across and ask the pharmacy if I could book an appointment, but they did it on the spot. So it is like 10 o'clock. I feel productive. I've filmed two videos. I've had a vaccination. I've been to the supermarket. I am going to put something in the slow cooker. I think I'm going to do pulled pork. I haven't done it for a while. If you're new to my channel in the sort of the last 10 months, you may not have seen me do this because I make pulled pork all the time during winter. It is featured in many, many vlogs. So it is apparently gonna be a feature in this one as well. We're going with Steph is a chaotic mess, but is being productive. That is my vibe today. pork is in the slow cooker. In the base there is orange juice. You're supposed to juice one orange. I didn't have an orange but I had orange juice, some garlic um, and some also a little bit of onion powder. You're supposed to put onions in but I don't eat onions because they make me feel like rubbish. So onion powder has to suffice. And then the rub on the pork is paprika, salt, pepper, a little bit of cumin, oregano and I think that's about it. All right I'm going to turn this on.
time to choose the next book that I'm going to be reading. So let's choose the row. This is going to be row one. And book two, Double Down by Susan Hayes, which is a sci-fi romance. All right, hockey time. I feel like this is too much, but hey, what the hell? I'm at home and I'm in front of the heater. I might as well wear my Mustangs jersey. Shame I'm not actually reading hockey romance. The sci-fi romance is good though. So that was very stressful, but they won. They don't have the best record on the road. So they were in the central coast. But <laughs> There was an empty net goal as well. That was cool. All right, now I need to go shower and then I think dinner's nearly ready. So I finished Double Down, which is by Susan Hayes. It is a sci-fi romance. It is an MFM romance, No Sword Crossing between two cyborg soldiers and a alien pilot. And by alien pilot, I mean that the heroine in this book is half human, half some blue kind of alien. Anyway, she is a pilot. She has become friends with Luke and Kit, who are co-owners in a bar. They used to be cyborg soldiers. They got out of the war and they opened up this business with one of their batch sisters, Cinder, who I think her book is the next one. Anyway, both Luke and Kit are biologically the same, like they were created and they are both attracted to Zura. The next time she's in their bar at the start of the book, they just start flirting with her and invite her on a date. But a former flame of hers is after her and after some money that her father left her before he died and that is essentially it. They are trying to stop this guy and to keep Zora safe and she is trying to find out what her father left her and it's fun. There are threesomes and action scenes and space scenes and bar scenes. I mean <laughs> what more could you want? I don't know it was fun. I actually really really enjoyed it. GNT interlude. I've not made one in a while. Anyway I enjoyed that one and we are going to pick the next book that I'm going to read for this reading vlog. Okay, what row are we going to read next? Oh, what is that? Six. Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> that nearly landed in my drink. We're not, we're not putting dice in my gin and tonic. Three. Two for boarding. Two for Boarding is the fourth book in the Minnesota Snow Pirates series and I'm really enjoying it so far. I think how far am I into it? 24% so I'm a quarter of the way through and it is the story of an enforcer on the Minnesota Snow Pirates team. It's a college hockey team. It's his relationship with one of their physiotherapists. She is three years older I think and she is on the run. She left her husband who was cheating on her and, and hit her and She's not divorced yet, so I just want to make that clear before we do anything else. But she has changed her name and left Texas and is basically hiding from her family and her husband. The very first chapter is the two of them meeting in a sex dungeon. And he is a dom. She is, well, as far as she knows, she's vanilla. And there is this, like, immediate spark between the two of them and some really funny hijinks about how they get to talking. But then he injures his shoulder. He dislocates it and so they're starting to spend more time together and it's really good like it's it's very heavy on the explaining the BDSM scene and the kink scene so it's like one of those books if you have never read anything it's good because it goes through all of the consent issues 
but if you've read a few books you might find it a little bit heavy on the explanations but I'm still enjoying the book so yeah we're gonna see how this goes huh that was not what I was expecting I really enjoyed it it was very well written and easy to read and you know if you are someone who is looking to find out more about the kink community it's probably a good one to start with but I have a feeling because this is four I think I said anyway I have a feeling that this book and I need to do some investigating it sits in the middle of a hockey series which is not necessarily kink focused and possibly part of a kink focused series so it's in that weird sort of in two series places but it was good I enjoyed it and yes it was a bit dramatic at times but you know what it was entertaining wish there was a bit more hockey on page but yeah good morning happy Sunday I thought I slept okay but I woke up early and basically my entire body hurts and my arm where I had the vaccination yesterday feels like it's bruised it's generally throbbing and stinging like it's not a reaction like I know it's just the the normal sort of post vaccination thing but it hurts so none of that is helping my mood just on 8 40 a.m so I'm gonna sit here on the couch and I'm gonna catch up on YouTube videos for a little bit until I feel like a human being I have worked out what I'm gonna read today because I'm not gonna roll the dice but I just I need to just zone out for like an hour started my next book it is iridescent lust by Ryder O'Malley it's a queer superhero story it's the third book in the heroes of vanguard book so it's book three Heroes of vanguard book three oh my gosh words coming in in the middle of the series I'm trying to piece together a bit of the history of the superheroes and whatnot but I am really enjoying it the main character there's only one POV is for, uh, Alejandro who is a bartender who works in a bar that caters exclusively to superheroes in this world and there are tons and tons of superheroes I believe there's also aliens a whole lot of villains etc anyway he is not a guy who settles down very often he is the king of one night stands with superheroes and he ends up being rescued one morning by a superhero he doesn't know whose name is EO EO tracks him down later on at the bar and they are flirting and we find out that EO has a husband another superhero and that they are polyamorous and at the moment it is EO courting Alejandro and I don't think EO's husband is involved in this aside from you know maybe him and Alejandro becoming friends but anyway I'm like 30% of the way in and it's surprisingly sweet I'm gonna keep reading all right so I finished Iridescent Lust and I really enjoyed it Alejandro is such a hot mess of a character in this book in that he totally falls for Eo or whose name is Theo and then one of the supervillain groups in the city their ability is to incite fear and so of course all of the all of Alejandro's insecurities about being in a relationship with a guy who is married to someone else like it messes with him so badly and he is trying to figure out which way is up and like I really enjoyed it I would go back and read the other books in the series I am very intrigued like there are definitely points where I felt a little bit confused and I'm thinking that's because it is book three in the series but as far as superhero reads go it was great and there are aliens and sci-fi elements and they end up on different planets at different times and Theo is just very very sweet and I love the relationship that Alejandro has with Theo's husband Julian because they really become friends and I appreciate that yeah it's a really enjoyable read I'm glad I tried it I think I'm going to read the Jackie Lau book that I have next which I think is Grumpy Fake Boyfriend and then there is an Alison Lind book as well that I might try and read today and also the Mustangs are playing at five o'clock so it is 100% a couch day and I realize that this background looks ridiculous because I basically have blankets everywhere and my Udi and I'm basically using this as a pillow <laughs> while I sit here and read but it's a Sunday it's a lazy Sunday hashtag relatable so i just finished grumpy fake boyfriend by jackie lau and this book is utterly delightful the basic premise is you have will who is a sci-fi author and he is very much an introvert i related to him deeply and some of some of the things that he has i'm like oh, those are thoughts that i have on a daily basis he finds it really difficult with his family who are massive extroverts and you know always want him to be around people but his best friend Jeremy comes over and asks him to go as his sister's fake boyfriend to a couple's weekend away with her 
because it's a regular outing that she has with friends but her ex-boyfriend is going with his new girlfriend those two are pda everywhere will reluctantly agrees to go and it's hilarious because there are some things that will and naomi absolutely do not agree on and then at other times the chemistry is all there it was really fun they sort of go through the three days of the long weekend holiday there is a bit of that third act issue but i did like how it was resolved and i also liked the discussion in there around you no know, will being very hesitant to get involved in a relationship because his previous partner had tried to change him and his realization that that was not what naomi was trying to do at all was just precious i loved it it was very sweet very funny i like naomi's friends as well they were really entertaining so yeah, this was really successful so i also read changing the formula by jenna mccall which was a spin-off novella for a series it's kind of hockey adjacent because one of the side characters is a college hockey player but it is about shiloh who is a tutor at college she's 21 she is tutoring mateo in calculus and she ends up meeting his older brother santiago and it's their relationship it's very much insta lust it's like 70 pages long but entertaining enough and a very quick read i'm gonna get ready to watch the hockey and then i'll probably read one more book for this vlog it will probably be the allison lint book which is the roommates which i think is another polyamorous story i will check in soon and probably have more clips of me watching the hockey because of course i will i am that person now We're currently down 3-0. Sad face. Kind of expecting that though, like this... Mm. I actually don't know what the track record is like with the Mustangs versus the Sydney Bears. I don't think it's good. And uh, I think I forgot to say yesterday, I found out that the Mustangs coach has had to leave and go back to Minnesota. So that also really sucks because apparently he was a really good coach. Like I don't know that much about the back end sort of the team, but yeah, that was announced yesterday, so that's disappointing. Oh well, we will be optimistic. Sometimes the Mustangs come back in the second half of the game, so fingers crossed. So I should be reading The Roommates because I have started it. But I have once again been distracted by people reacting to Australian bands and Australian songs. I have, I think I mentioned this to a few people a little while back. So I got sucked in when I saw people reacting to John Farnham for the first time. And if you have never heard John Farnham sing, if you're not Australian, go look up the John Farnham concert. I forget what year it is. I was a baby but it was with the melbourne symphony orchestra listen to you're the voice and watch the performance it's amazing and also his cover of help by the beatles but since then i have just gone down a rabbit hole of watching people react to australian bands from e everyone from john farnham to cold chisel and jimmy barnes to tina arena who is just stunning like these are all the all the artists that i listened to growing up because they were the people that my parents listened to and they're still some of my absolute favorite all-time singers but anyway i have now stumbled across people reacting to Crowded House and Neil Finn who is an incredible singer-songwriter and the stuff that Crowded House put out like I vividly remember listening to this as a kid anyway so I've been listening to people <laughs> reacting to Don't Dream It's Over, Fall At Your Feet. If you have not heard these songs I'll try and remember to leave some links to some of them down below if you want to check them out like they are amazing like hands down like I'm not putting a qualifier they are just really incredible artists and songs i don't listen to a lot of current music like i i'll hear things and i'll pop them on playlists and whatever that's reasonably current but i'm not on top of things but if you ask me what i would listen to voluntarily over and over again it's 
all of these artists who I grew up listening to. Yes, that makes me very old. So anyway, I'm going to finish listening to one of these songs and then I'm going to go back to the book. Just a, you know, barbecue shape snack while I'm reading because I'm hungry. All right, so I finished The Roommates and this is by Alison Lint. I have read one of her books before, I think. Anyway, this is a polyamorous sort of situation. It is two guys and a woman. So the heroine is Daria. She is a single mom. She's got two girls. She's divorced from her husband. And at the start of the book, her kids are going on holiday with her ex-husband to Disneyland. They were supposed to go on a trip to Hawaii with her, but he won out. So there's a little bit of bitterness there. And just as she's about to leave on holiday, one her boss calls and basically says there's an emergency and he she needs to work through her holiday week which would be fine except for the fact that she has offered her house up to her daughter's two swimming coaches who need a place to stay while their place is fumigated i think they are a little bit younger than daria and it is their relationship and it was kind of very sweet because the two guys are best friends colin has been in love with tanner for a long time tanner is very adorably completely clueless about that fact and so part of the conflict is them working through those feelings and also Daria's daughters finding out that they're together and then working out exactly what it is that they want from each other and do they want to make time for this relationship and then on top of that sorry the blanket just fell down <laughs> um, Colin and Tanner are also trying to put together a business proposal to buy the swimming school that they work at and to remodel it and refurb it and you know that's going on in the background as well. It was a really enjoyable read and kind of light and fluffy for the last book of this reading vlog. I had a lot of fun reading these books and I think there were some really interesting books in there, a couple of surprises in a good way. I mean, there was a DNF at the start, but who cares? Hi everyone, so this is a few days later and I realized I have not wrapped up this vlog and I thought I would come back and, and talk about it. So I had a really good time reading the books from the Stuff Your Kindle sale. It's interesting because I've had a couple of conversations with people around the Stuff Your Kindle sale and there are some people who really love it and there are some people who don't and there are some people who go crazy and download hundreds of books and there are people who don't understand why people would even do that and I think it's interesting. I did share something on my TikTok page which I think is important. I think if you are going to download books from this that you at least try and read some of them and in particular that you read them and you at least rate them for authors because they're putting something of theirs up for free most of the time so that it's a promotional boost and i think that's really important so that like if you're going to download books i feel like it should be with the intent that you'll actually at least attempt to read some of them. It's interesting because I think we are a very consumer driven community because we consume a lot of content and I think it's easy to get sidetracked by things being free and you know this this comes on the heel there's a, there's a bit of entitlement going on in the book community at least specifically I think the book talk community at the moment which is a little bit depressing and I, part of me is frustrated because I think this sale came at around the time when all of this was kicking off with some of the conventions over in the US. But in a lot of ways, it makes me really happy that a whole group of us, uh, May is also now included in this group. She decided that she was gonna join in, that we specifically did it with the intent of reading some things and you know, doing it together and having a chat about it while we were reading and sharing things that we had found and things that we thought other people would be interested in in order to, I don't know if keep it contained is the right way of saying it, but in a way of being almost accountable, or at least that's that's how I feel about it, is, is being accountable. If I'm gonna download free things that I'm at least attempting to read them because yeah, my Kindle has unlimited space and you guys know I, I don't really care about how many books are on my Kindle because it's it's not taking up physical space in my, my apartment, but it can still get overwhelming. And I think I said at the start of the video, I, I had deleted a whole bunch of stuff off my Kindle just prior to this that I knew that I was no longer going to read. And I do that periodically. I think that that happens all the time because there are books that I buy or books that are gifted to me that ultimately I don't end up reading and I end up unhauling and donating to charities and things like that. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Like everyone has the choice to manage what they own in their own way. But yeah, I don't know if this is very coherent. Anyway, suffice to say, like I enjoyed this opportunity to just try and read some different authors, some different books, things that I hadn't heard of before, do it with some friends, have some fun, share my thoughts with you guys. And, you know, keep in mind that 
I probably have a better plan of attack for the next time this comes around because I will continue to download things from this. It is a marketing and promotional thing for the authors and I think that is really important. I just now know that when I go into this it's not about spending hours and hours going through the list of thousands of books that are listed. It's about going in and going okay well what are you interested in reading right now? Do some keyword searches, have a look, chat to some friends who are also interested who are also having a look, see what's of actual interest to me and downloading based on that rather than just downloading everything. Now for some people that mean, might mean you're interested in a lot of books. Totally fine. No judgment here. For me personally, I found it much easier just to be contained by a couple of keywords and a couple of recommendations from friends and some authors that I have read before and, and trust. And it worked out for me. I'm glad that it did. As I said, very disorganized thinking, but I'm really happy with how this vlog turned out. I read nine things. One of them I did DNF. Totally fine. That's always going to happen, particularly when I am trying new authors for the first time. I'm also moving all of the hockey romances I downloaded into my unread hockey folder because I'm going to continue reading hockey romances. So they will get read or at least tried at some point. And I did enjoy going through a whole stack of books and perfect timing for me being on holidays. So <laughs> I can't really complain. Anyway, I hope that you really enjoyed this vlog. I hope that if you did participate in the Stuff Your Kindle sale, that you got books that you are interested in reading. I hope you're not feeling overwhelmed by it. And if you didn't download anything, I hope that maybe you get some recommendations for people that maybe you just keep on your radar and you want to try later on. That's the cool thing about reviewing books is just hearing that other people might be interested in checking that out later on. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up in the comments. If you would like to share anything that you downloaded and or have read from the stuff you Kindle sale, feel free to leave more recommendations down below. I always love them. Otherwise, feel free to leave a computer emoji down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone.